Magic Sorcerer is one of my favorite solo builds in ESO, not just for its insane self-healing and survivability, but because you can do about 80% of your total damage with just one button. Alright everybody, here we are back on the Magicka Sorcerer with an update to our solo heavy attack build. This is going to be actually great for solo and group content. Tons of damage and extremely easy to play. I'm talking about one button for the majority of your damage. So let's go ahead and jump right into things and check out the character sheet. Looking at our stats here, 34,000 max Magicka, 28,000 max health, which is insane, and about 13,000 max stamina so our resources are amazing on this build recoveries not so much i'll be honest the recoveries are not good but that's totally fine because you don't need recovery on a heavy attack build we actually have higher stamina recovery than anything else and that's going to help a lot with blocking and roll dodging but our magical recovery totally unnecessary uh, so don't worry about that particular stat line spell damage is looking good about 4600 50 percent spell crit is looking good as well and then we have good resistances overall. Of course, we have 64 points into Max Magicka. That's what you're going to want on this Magicka Sorcerer build. In terms of the Mundus Stone, we're running the Thief Mundus, which is in here somewhere. There it is, increasing our critical chance rating across the board. And then we are using the blue quality food. That's what I recommend on this particular build. Whatever the recipe is you have, increasing your max health and max Magicka by as much as possible. That's going to be really really good. Now we have access to a ton of buffs on this particular setup. That's of course because we're using the Oaken Soul Ring, but the main buff that you want is going to be in power. So make sure you have this buff no matter what. This increases your damage done with heavy attacks against monsters by 80%. So this is basically the bread and butter of this particular setup. You need to get in power somehow on this build. Oaken Soul Ring is by far the easiest way to get it. If you don't have that, we'll talk about that later. There's other skills like from the Mages Guild that you could run that would give you Empower as well if you wanted to do something like a two-bar setup for this particular build. Now, as far as the race here, lots of good options. I still really like High Elf for running a Magicka Sorcerer. You get the weapon and spell damage, which is great. You get the Max Magicka, that nice big Magicka pool, but also Spell Recharge is great for the extra sustain, either Magicka or Stamina, whichever is lower. Probably going to be stamina in this case, but that again, it's helpful with like roll dodges, blocks. But of course, when you're channeling something or an ability that has a cast time, in this case, our heavy attacks are channels, uh, we also take a little bit less damage. 5% damage reduction is a pretty nice passive bonus. So that is what I recommend. But like I said, the difference is not huge. You can make this work on a Dark Elf, Khajiit, uh, any Magicka race probably would be preferred. And I think that covers the basics. So let's jump right into the gear sets next. And let's talk about the most important thing, which is your choice of Mythic. Now, Oaken Soul Ring just works really well on a heavy attack build. We just talked about this where you get the Empower buff. That's the last buff on our tooltip here for the Oaken Soul. That's super important with any type of heavy attack build. Now, not only that, obviously Oaken Soul gives you a ton of major and minor buffs. It gives you your major damage buff, which is major sorcery. It gives you your major crit buff, which is major prophecy. Of course, it gives you like minor force, which is more crit damage. Minor Protection, which is more uh, defense, Major Resolve, which is your armor buff, and so much more. This just really simplifies things, you guys, and it makes it so you don't have to use a lot of skills. All of your buffs are taken care of, uh, so really you're just heavy attacking, maybe doing one or two damage skills if you want, and then using your ultimate when it's ready. It's just such an easy setup that I highly recommend it. I also have a guide for how to get the Oaken Soul Ring if you don't have it yet. Um, but it is recommended for this type of playstyle. Now, if you don't want to use it, if you don't want to uh, stick to just one bar, then there are other, you know, really strong options as well. I would say Sea Serpent's Coil would probably be my second choice. That will give you some good damage buffs, but you will need to maintain two skill bars. You will have to maintain your buffs, you know, your damage buff, your crit chance, your armor, all that stuff. But that is a good option as well. Second 5P set, let's go look at the uh, staff here. Lightning Staff of the Sergeant. And this is literally the strongest heavy attack set in the game. 
uh, just so you guys know. It's mostly because of the five-piece bonus. The two- and three-piece stats are not that great. I mean, max health, health recovery doesn't do a lot for us in terms of damage, but the five-piece bonus, because this is so strong, it, it actually makes up for those. So when you do a heavy attack, you gain a stack of Sergeant's Focus for five seconds. Uh, that's 645 bonus heavy attack damage, and that can stack up to four times. So that's about 2,500 or so extra damage on each heavy attack. That, of course, is going to scale with all of your buffs. It's going to scale up with Empower, with your spell damage. So no joke on like a, a raid dummy, a target dummy. If you have this fully proc and off balance, you can hit over 100k damage heavy attacks. That's how powerful some of these heavy attack sets are. So I do recommend you pick this one up if you are a heavy attack enjoyer. This comes from Wayrest Sewers Dungeon. It's a base game zone, so it's pretty easy to pick up, uh, though it is a dungeon set, you, so you will have to do a bit of farming. Um, but the Lightning Staff is going to be recommended, obviously, for the channeled heavy attacks. We've got Precise as the recommended trait here for the extra crit chance. Then I'm running a Damage Shield enchant. This is kind of just a, an easy way to increase your survivability. Free Damage Shield lasts for five seconds. If you want even more survival, you can actually change the trait to Infused. You'll get an even larger shield that has no cooldown, and this procs off of your heavy attack. So that's a really good kind of secret way to really increase your survival, is use this uh, Damage Shield Enchant. If you just want more damage, you can use the Shock Glyph. Uh, that's a nice option too. So two-handed weapon, that's going to give us two pieces of Sar Sergeant's Mail. We're going to run the chess piece of Sergeant's Mail because that's a heavy set, so you get the most armor possible for running the sergeant's chest piece and then just two pieces on the jewelry necklace one ring because we obviously have the oak and soul ring so uh, for all of these spell damage is going to be your enchant that you want and then bloodthirsty is recommended especially on these sergeant's pieces because they come in healthy which gives you even more health you'll be like over 30k health which is fine uh, but you'll get a lot more damage if you trait change these to Bloodthirsty. So Sergeant's Mail is our first heavy attack set. And then we're running actually a second heavy attack set. Another base game set. Super easy to pick up. Noble Duelist. This is also one of my favorite uh, heavy attack sets. Gives you stamina recovery. Two weapon and spell damage bonuses, which is nice. Then when you deal uh, light or heavy attack damage in melee range... You get about 2,100 bonus heavy attack damage for 15 seconds. So not quite as strong as terms in terms of the bonus, the five-piece bonus, as Sergeant's Mail. But it does have better stats overall. And it's also a light armor set, which means you can run this on the body for a Magicka Sorcerer. And then you get all those nice light armor passives, like the extra crit chance, the extra penetration, the Magicka uh, recovery and cost reduction. All those nice light armor uh, stats that we like on a Magicka solo build, you're going to be getting from Noble Duelist. So we're running it on the feet, the legs, hands, waist, and the uh, shoulders there. So five pieces on the body. Like I said, these are all light. So Max Magicka there as your enchant. Divines as the trait if you can get it. And then that just leaves us one extra piece. The uh, one piece monster set we're going to use here, Slime Craw, gives you the optimal amount of crit chance. Then we're running this as light um, as well, just for the extra light armor passives. You could put a medium here for a bit more armor. You actually get a bit more uh, resources with your undaunted metal passive. But I like having the extra crit chance from one extra light armor piece, so I'm going to go with light for this setup. So again, we've got Sergeant's Mail as our main lightning staff, plus jewelry, plus a chest piece, Noble Duelist, uh, rest of the body pieces, and then Slime Craw going to be your one piece monster set now this is the super simple build you guys this is the one bar build i do have a two bar version of this that's going to be on my website i'll have a link in the description in the pinned comment if you want to see the two bar build you'll definitely get a bit more damage on that one but it's going to be trickier uh, to do the two bar rotation all right let's jump right over into skills this is so easy you guys starting with our main buff here critical surge and this actually is kind of redundant. It gives us the Major Brutality buff and Major Sorcery. But the main reason you want this, especially for solo content, is the heal. So when you deal critical damage, you're going to heal for 3630. It actually crits for much higher, about five 6,000. And you get that every one second most of the time because we have lots of damage over time. This procs off our Lightning Staff heavy attacks as well. So really good. Make sure you use this. That's from the Storm Calling skill line, second to last ability there. Uh, next up, Unstable Wall of Storms. Now, this is really interesting. This comes from Destruction Staff. 
And this is even more important, I would say, for playing solo in the group, maybe not so much, because oftentimes your healers will run or your tank will even run an ability like this. But Unstable Wall of Storms sets enemies off balance. It sets concussed enemies off balance. So basically, concussed is a status effect. When you hit them with the Wall of Storms, it's going to set the enemy off balance. Well, guess what? Off balance enemies take even more damage from heavy attacks. So that little window that you get from an off balance, uh, like six, five, six seconds, I think it is, that's when you're doing your most damage. So it's going to be important to maintain this skill just to keep your damage maximized. Now you can use either morph. I did use unstable morph. This is a 10 second duration instead of the 15 second duration. You do have to cast it a little bit more, but I feel like it does do slightly more damage. So that's why I'm recommending that one. Uh, next up, we got Hardened War. This is just your damage shield. This is your survivability, especially for solo content. You will want to pop this uh, like before a boss heavy attack, something like that, or a big ad pull of lots of enemies are coming in. Make sure you prep with having your shield ready, uh, and then you can just weave this in between your heavy attacks whenever you need it, when your healing is not quite enough. Next up is our flex spot, and there's lots of really good options you can throw in on this build due to how simple it is, right? Now, I am personally a big fan of the new version of Elemental Susceptibility. This was just added in Update 36. Now, it still gives you Major Breach, which is a nice uh, armor debuff that's going to be really good for dungeons and arenas to decrease your enemy's armor. But also, every six seconds, you are going to apply all of the magical status effects, so burning, chilled, and concussion. So this goes hand-in-hand -hand with the uh, Unstable Wall or the Elemental Blockade Morph, whichever one you choose. This is going to apply the Concuss status effect, which then is going to proc off balance from your Wall of Storm. So not only that, you get a lot of good extra damage from like the Burning uh, status effect as well. And it's just free damage that you're getting on top of already you know, decreasing your enemy's armor. So this is really good, especially for bosses, like I said, single target fights. For more of like, um, let's say, experience grinding or clearing your way through a dungeon, you'll definitely want more AoE damage. So in that case, I actually like the Volatile Familiar pet from Daedric Summoning. This is great because it does AoE damage, uh, pulsing shock damage, but it also stuns. So you actually get two stuns off during the duration. This is going to be great for crowd control. Like I said, when you have a lot of enemies coming in, that's a very nice option as well. Uh, and another uh, sort of a third option we could do here is going to be Storm Calling, and I would do Mage's Fury morphed to Mage's Wrath, another sort of good uh, execute and also AoE skill because it does splash damage. That's going to be another really good option. Last but not least, Bound Aegis comes from the Daedric Summoning skill line as well, and it's just another passive buff. It gives us lots of great stats. The minor protection we already get uh, from the Oaken Soul Ring, you can use this to increase block mitigation, which is really nice for those Big boss heavy attacks, like if you're trying to solo your way through a dungeon, remember that you can pop this for 40% extra block mitigation. That's huge. Um, but also 8% max magico while slotted, plus the minor resolve buff. That's really nice as well. And then finally, for the ultimate here, you have lots of options on the Sorcerer too, which is nice. You can always use Greater Storm Atronach from Daedric Summoning. You can use the Mages Guild ultimates. I really like, though, the Destruction Staff Ultimate. This seems to be, like, the best overall ultimate. Has the biggest range, which is great for clearing through a lot of enemies. It does huge damage, and since you're using the uh, Lightning Staff, the Thunderous Rage Morph gives you the longest duration. So you'll get a ton of damage from this ultimate. Uh, make sure to pop it early uh, and as often as you can because it's a huge, big damage source for this build. So that's pretty much the setup, you guys. And it's really simple, like I said. We can do a quick boss uh, rotation here to show you how easy it is. But basically, you just make sure your crit surge is buffed and maintained. You're going to debuff the boss with the uh, elemental susceptibility. Drop your ultimate if you have it. Pop your wall. You can see that off balance uh, procced immediately. And I'm going to do heavy attacks after that just to take advantage. So when your wall drops like that, go ahead and recast it. When your buffs, crit surge, and the uh, elemental susceptibility debuff get low, about 10 seconds, you can recast those. Here, my wall is going off again, but you can see the boss is already below half health, and I've only done one or two rotations of this. 
So my wall is about to expire. Recast that again right there. And you can weave in your abilities between heavy attacks. You don't even need to let go of the trigger uh, on a heavy attack build, which is really easy. Uh, but you can see the boss is already dead. So super easy. Uh, and like I said, lots of damage, lots of power with this particular setup. Now, I don't want to go through all the passives. If you'd like to see those, those are going to be listed in the written guide. Check out the link in the description for that. We'll go ahead and jump right into champion points, make this one quick. Starting in the green tree, slotted stars are going to be Steed's Blessing. And then Treasure Hunter, Rationer, Liquid Efficiency. Those are just kind of the main ones I typically use in the green tree. Uh, blue tree slotted stars are definitely interesting. The main one that you want, or that I think is the most powerful, is actually down here. Weapons Expert gives you 20% bonus damage done with heavy attacks. A lot of people miss this, but for a heavy attack focus build, it actually makes a lot of sense. Make sure you pick that up. Next, I would definitely go with Fighting Finesse for extra crit damage and extra crit healing. Uh, Wrathful Strike is actually really good for the bonus weapon and spell damage. This doesn't show up on your stat sheet, but it does buff all of your abilities. Uh, and then Biting Aura for the extra AoE damage. That's going to buff our wall. That's going to buff, you know, things like our Destruction Staff Ultimate. Finally, uh, you may want to pick these up early if you're having any trouble soloing. Quick Recovery and then Preparation. 10% damage reduction is huge. You already get a lot of damage reduction uh, on this build. You also have the shields, obviously, but this does make a huge difference. And then finally, in the Red Tree, this is actually pretty easy, too. Fortified is always good for the armor. Boundless Vitality, great for the max health. Then I actually work my way up here. So Sprinter, Hasty, Hero's Vigor, all the way up. You do have to put at least 10 points into Shield Master. But once you do that, you can unlock Bastion. And that's going to give you 15% bonus damage shield strength. So that's going to buff Harden Ward. As well as even your damage shield Glyph. If you decide to use that on the uh, Shock Staff. If you decide to use that one. And then finally... Siphoning spells is nice for, you know, crowds of enemies. We're not going to need a lot of magic to sustain, but it is there um, in case you need it. That's another nice option. Finally, for the outfit style, if you're curious uh, what these armor styles are, we can go ahead and check that out. These are actually all the same on all the body pieces. It's the uh, light armor version of the ancient Daedric style. But if you have questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out what video YouTube recommends next on the left or join one of our membership squads on the right. There's a link to check out our ESO Build Academy in the middle, and thanks again for watching.